doing uh, Math Pace 1087, and uh, I want to look at page 28 right now. Um, on page 27, there's a uh, explanation of how to do this type of problem, and actually in the preceding several pages, you've been solving a lot of equations and um, undoing the addition or subtraction first, and then maybe moving an x from one side to the other, and you learned that little rule, if when you change sides, you change signs. So to move 3x from the right to the left, it becomes minus 3x, etc. Hopefully you've done well on those pages and uh, the checkup. But um, I noticed in the, helping a student go through um, this page 28 recently that uh, these types of problems kind of stumped them. They just, they look different and, and it's always a little intimidating when we see fractions in the middle of an algebra problem. So let's um, at least get these far enough that you can finish them, and uh, then those, these three should help you do the rest on this page and the next couple of pages, hopefully, all right? The equal sign always reminds us that the two sides of the equation have to be balanced. They have to stay equal. So whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do the same thing to the other side. And the sides are the, where the equal sign is, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this 7. So I'm going to take the 7 to the other side, and it becomes negative 27, because it was positive 7 here, all right? So I'll end up with 2 thirds x equals 21 minus 7. And of course, that is 14, okay? So I have 2 thirds x equals 14. Now, what do we do to solve this? And if you look back at page uh, 27 and they walk you through the steps, they say whatever the denominator is, that is what we're going to multiply both sides by, okay? So we would multiply this by 3 and multiply 14 by 3. And that will cancel, the 3 will cancel the 3, so we'll get 2x equals, and then 14 times 3 is 42, I believe, okay? And then the last step is you would divide by 2. And I'm not going to do that step for you, okay? But you see what we did? We first got rid of the addition. Then whatever the denominator is, you multiply both sides by that. And then what's left here is the 2x. And so then you can divide by 2, all right? Let's look at this next problem. This one, <coughs> we'll subtract 4, okay? So bring that over here and end up with 6 minus 4. And so now I have x over 5 equals, actually they don't do this in the face. They just say move it to the other side and subtract. All right, so 6 minus 4 is 2. Now what's the next step? I have x divided by 5 equals 2. So we undo the division here by multiplying both sides times 5. Good, all right, I'll let you finish that one. Let's look at this last one. Again, we're going to undo the subtraction, but now, because this is subtraction, when I undo it, I'm adding four to the other side, okay? So now I have 16 plus four, and I'm gonna go ahead and just write that as 20, and then we have five X over three. Now, <clears throat> if it doesn't seem as obvious to you as maybe on some of these others, like this one, there's a fraction in front of the X, two thirds X, this actually is the same as saying 5 thirds x. We have 5x over 3. We solve it the same way. We multiply both sides by 3 first, okay? And then that will leave just 5x. And then you'll have 5x equals some number, and then the last step is to divide by the 5, okay? Um, now I'll just end with a little tip that I um, give my students when they're doing problems like this. Whenever you have a fraction times the variable, you can do two steps in once by multiplying by the reciprocal, okay, of this fraction. Because then this becomes 15 over 15, or that just cancels out, and you have x equals. And then you can just simplify this. So you can cancel the 20 against the 5, multiply that times 3, and you're done, okay? So that makes it a little faster, but the way the pace explains it is to first multiply to get rid of the denominator, and then in the last step, divide by whatever 
coefficient or number is in front of the variable.